What's up YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor here and today we're going to start a new series of videos to hopefully help you out. This is the first of many videos on how to program PLCs and before we start programming we have to set up communications and so we're going to talk about that today. And so just quickly we're going to be looking at four main programs within the RS Logix software. One of them is the one we're going to look at today is called RS Links Classic. Now RS Links Classic is how we set up network drivers in RS Logix. The next software we're going to be looking at in the future is called Studio 5000. This is a software that we use to do all the programming within the PLC. Factory Talk View ME is what we're going to be using for HMIs to program HMIs in the near future. And then finally, Studio 5000 Logix Emulator is what we'll be using because I'm actually remoting into a PLC lab and so to be able to manipulate inputs and outputs we're going to be using an emulator which is basically just a simulated PLC. This emulator can be very helpful and again we'll have a video just on how to set one up and the purpose of them in the future. Okay so for this video we're going to start with our RS links. I want to open this up and this program again is to establish our communications. So it is very important, I always do this first, to actually establish communications with the PLC because once we have our program running we need to download to a PLC and we cannot do that unless we have a network set up within RS Classic Gateway. Now there are different versions of this. Uh, this is the RS Lynx Classic Gateway. Uh, but they all generally work the same. And so we're going to set up three communications in today's video. The first one is our older Ethernet cards that has a static IP address. The way we do that is whenever we establish any communication over here, you'll notice on the left here it shows the PLCs that we have created. Okay, so we're going to add to this list over here to the left. I'll go to Communications and then we're going to configure drivers. When we click that, we see this screen here. Now we've got some options. When we click this down arrow, we can see here that if, like for instance, if you're using a 232, uh, which would be a lot slower, but if you want to connect that way, this is where you establish that connection. This first one, we're going to have this Ethernet device. We're also going to use an Ethernet IP driver, and I'll explain the difference of that here in a minute. And then later on, we'll go down to the bottom and, and select a virtual driver for our emulator. But right now, we're going to select the Ethernet device. Now, when you have an older Ethernet card, you have to actually manually put in the IP address. So you need to know this. Okay, I happen to know the IP address in my lab. So I'm going to hit Add New. The first box that pops up is the, something that we need to name. In my PLC lab, PLC rack that has the older Ethernet card is PLC 20. So I'm just going to name this PLC 20. Remember to name this something that whenever you come back to it, you know exactly what you're looking at here. Now, this next screen comes up and it tells us we need to map address this PLC. And so again, I know my IP address for my network, so I'm going to enter that in here. I hit OK. Now let's close this out and see what happened. Notice over here, now we see our PLC 20 Ethernet. If I expand this, the first thing that's going to happen is we're communicating through our, from our computer to our Ethernet card. That's the first thing that happens because it's, it's connected to our network. The next thing that the Ethernet card is connected to is our backplane. And so that's the next thing we see. Now connected to the backplane is all the rest of our PLC cards. And so now when we look over here, we see our PLC rack here. Now it's kind of confusing because it puts the Ethernet card at first, but what we're using in our labs is a 10 slot backplane. And so you notice it starts here with zero, slot zero, and it goes up to slot nine. And if you look at the picture here, you'll notice that this is showing the actual PLC that's in the rack here. Now, don't get confused with something here because we have two CPU cards in this rack. So when we look back here, you see this, it says blank. That's because this is the end of the semester and I downloaded a file named blank into every one of the PLCs. So that's why that says blank. It's not because that slot eight is blank, it's because that's the name of the program. So in the future, let's say that we do a program called traffic lights. 
well, you'll see traffic lights under this slot instead of just blank. Okay, now I want to show you something that a lot of people don't know about. And I'm going to open up an, a browser. Because there's actually two ways to communicate with the PLC to determine which cards are in which slots. In the future videos, whenever we go to download and establish communications with an actual PLC, we need to know three things. And the three things are the type of card that we're using, the slot number that it, that card is in, and the revisions that that card has. Now we can do all that with our links here. So I can right click any of these. So let's say that I'm setting my PLC up and I want to know information on my CPU card in slot 8. If I right click this and I go to the device properties, it tells me everything I need to know. And so this is the newer 1756 L81 CPU card. We know that it's in slot 8 and it tells me here that we have revision 32. Let's compare that to the older card that we have in here the 5550 card, which is an old card. We'll go to device properties. Now we know that that's in slot four. That's a Logix 5550 card. And notice the revision here, 13. So again, you can determine that this is a much older card and we can't even program this with the new Studio 5000. Again, we'll talk about that in the future. But I can get all this information just from a internet browser by simply entering in that same address that I entered in before. If I hit enter, since I'm on the same network as my PLC, I'm actually going into that PLC and it has a HTML. Okay. So when I click chassis who here, you're going to see there's the PLC and notice the similarities between this and the actual PLC. They're identical. So this shows us the PLC rack, what it looks like, and the cards and the slots they're in. Now I can click on these individual cards. So remember my 81 card, my CPU card that I first looked at was in slot 8. We see it here. If I click on that and go to module information, so there again it tells me it's in slot 8. It tells me the card. Go to module information, there's my 32 revision. Again, this is just a little shortcut way because sometimes it's quicker to just go into a browser and enter that address in and look at the information this way. We don't have to do that. We can do everything in our links. Okay, so now we've established communications with our PLC 20 rack. What I want to do next is establish an Ethernet IP. Now the difference between an Ethernet and Ethernet IP is Ethernet is only going to look at that one card in that one rack. Within that rack, I've actually got two communication cards. So we're going to see PLC 20 again. The older network card is address 20. The newer network card is address 21, but you're going to see these exact same cards in that slot. Okay. Now, whenever I establish an Ethernet IP, what this is going to do is this is going to pull my local network and it's going to pull in everything that I can communicate with through this RS Links Classic. And so what you're going to see here is inside my PLC lab, I have seven different PLC racks that are active right now. I have HMIs that are active. I have 18 desktops that are active. And what it's doing is it's actually looking at those desktops as a way to communicate because it has factory talk on those desktops. And so we can actually establish communications with all those. So first thing we're going to do is come up back up to communications, just like we did before, go to configure drivers. Here we're going to select Ethernet IP instead of just Ethernet. Now you're going to see something different here. So I hit Add New and it wants me to name it again. And instead of one PLC, since this is my whole lab, I'm going to name this PLC underscore lab. Just so I know what that is. Now when I hit OK, this is where you're going to see the difference. Notice I don't have a place to enter an address in. That's because I don't enter an address. Notice up here it's going to automatically browse my local subnet and it's going to pull in everything, like I said before, that I can communicate with. So I hit OK. I close this out. Now you see I've got my PLC 20, but I also have my PLC lab. Now watch what happens when I expand this. 
See that? It pulls in everything that I can communicate with with RS Links. You see my desktops here. I have all the desktops that I just told you about, all 18 of them. I also have my PLC racks. And so you can see here that that's an 81. Every time you see 81, what that is, is that's the new CPU cards, the newest Allen Bradley CPU cards that has a network built into it. So I'm sharing a slot with my CPU card with the newer 81s. So let's look at PLC 11 here. It's actually PLC 10, but my newer network, I call it 11. The first thing, again, we've got our backplane. I expand this out, and there's my PLC rack. Now let's look at, remember I told you about 20. So if I expand 20 here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in through slot 8 here now, which is address 21. So I find 21 down here in my list, right here. I expand that, go through my back plane. Now if you look, it's the same PLC rack. The only difference is here I'm communicating through my older Ethernet card, whereas here I'm communicating through my newer CPU card that has internet built into it, Ethernet IP. So again, if you have Ethernet IP cards, this is a lot easier way to set up communications with the Ethernet IP when it automatically pulls your subnet. Now finally, we're going to set up a virtual communication because again, when we use our emulator, we need this virtual communication and we have to set it up just like we do a, a physical communication. So we go back to configure drivers once again. This time we're going to look for virtual backplane right here. See this? And we're going to hit add new. Now you'll see this whenever we set up our emulator that our emulator network card is in slot zero. So I'm going to hit add new and then I'm going to name it. And so I'm just going to name this emulator so we know which one it is. Hit OK. Now, there you go. Ask me which slot it's in. So it's mine's in slot zero. I'm going to hit OK and close. And now I've got my virtual chassis as well. OK, so this is very important. Again, this is our first step in, in programming PLCs is setting up networks. If you need to go back and rewind this and watch this again, do it as many times as possible. If you have questions, you can leave them below and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. Please share this video. And if you like it, like and subscribe. Thank you, and I will see everybody in the next PLC video.